how's it going? So today I'd like to do an art tutorial for you about how to make wind spinners. They're also known as wind twirlers, whirly gigs, or even kinetic sculptures. And the supplies we're going to be using are actually your old school supplies. So if you want to find a notebook or even folders that have like this plastic cover on them, that's what we're going to be using to make our wind spinners. And you'll also be needing the metal part or even the plastic one works fine too that um, binds it together. So um, those will be the supplies that we'll need. And I'm gonna do three different wind spinners. So if you wanna just jump ahead and do just one of those instead of having to watch the whole video to find the one that you want to do, I'll have the times down here for where to start for each one of those tutorials. All right, and also for the winner for last week for our last art challenge that we did, let me go grab the names for that real quick. Get them. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so let's see. We had a lot of really cool entries. Okay, so for last week's macro art drawing challenge, the winner is Elaine L. All right, Elaine, I will contact your family and we'll get that out to you. And I hope you guys have a lot of fun with this art tutorial that we're gonna do. It's great weather for it, at least where I'm at right now, it's pretty windy out, so it's pretty cool to see those wind spinners going. All right, let's get started. The supplies you'll need for your wind spinners are plastic notebooks or folders, scissors, string or fishing line, a ruler, push pin or needle, pencil, and an optional fishing swivel which will help it spin. I'll start with the spiral spinner since that's the most simple. You'll start by tracing around a plate on your plastic folder or notebook cover. Now you can freehand the spiral design that you're going to draw in the center but I found when my lines were too thin, under an inch, they tended to just get kind of floppy when it was blowing in the wind. Start with a tapered edge and start going around with your spiral design, making sure that your line intersects with the one inch tick marks that you've created. Once you're done, you can begin cutting it out. You'll want to start by cutting out the entire circle and then with your scissors, follow the spiral line that you've created. Now your last step will be to poke a hole in the center of your spiral. Next, you can press your swivel into the hole you've created, or you can just simply tie the string through the hole. Our next spinner is the pinwheel. Create your pinwheel, you'll need a perfect square, so you'll want to trim off the plastic cover of your notebook and make sure you cut off any extra edges that are uneven. My square is gonna be seven and a half inches, but you can change it to whatever size you like that will fit onto your plastic cover. Remember, to make your square, you'll want to make sure that you measure up the same distance as your width. So I measured up seven and a half inches for my cross line. Now that I have it drawn, I'm gonna cut out my square. We'll start by shaping our pinwheel by folding one corner to the other. I found that it's much easier just to press it down instead of to slide your finger across. Next, you'll open up your triangle and fold the two opposite corners together. Now you can open it up to see the main shape of your pinwheel. Next, you'll want to find a circle to trace in the center. I found a quarter was a good size for that. With your scissors, you're going to cut along your folded lines, stopping at the circle that you've drawn in the center. Do this on all four corners. Next, you're going to take your push pin or needle and poke a hole in the right corner of each triangle that you've made. You also want to poke one in the center of your square where your two lines intersect. Next, you will take part of one of the spirals that bound your notebook and twist it about halfway through 
the hole in the center of your pinwheel. Now you will grab one of the corners that you've poked a hole through and stick it on the end of the spiral. Now moving to your left, you're going to repeat the same step. You'll grab your corner, fold it over, and then slide that onto the center spiral. You'll continue doing this until all the corners with holes in them have been attached to the center spiral. Next, you'll want to give your spiral a couple of twists to secure the end. And lastly, you'll take the end of that spiral and you'll want to set it inside of the spiral loop below to secure that in place so it doesn't unravel. Now you can attach your swivel or string to the center spiral and you can do it either on the top or the bottom. Either way will work and have a unique look when you go to spin them. Now on to our last spinner, the seashell. To start off the seashell, you'll want to trim off the very end of the spiral that binds your notebook and then unravel it. Now going from top to bottom, you are going to measure one inch increments on the top and the bottom of your plastic to make the slats for your shell. Now you'll connect your marks to create your slats. Once you have finished drawing your slats, you can begin cutting them out. Now you will need to poke a hole in the center of the bottom of each of your slats. These will be on the opposite end of the holes that the spiral bound went through. Once all of the holes have been poked through, you will then start attaching all of your slats into your spiral. You'll want to go to the centermost circle on each of the slats. Now that all of the slats are on your spiral, you're going to twist your spiral until the slats are in the center. Now one by one, we're going to separate the slats so they each have their own loop along the spiral. Once all of the slats have been separated onto their own loop, you're going to start with the bottommost slat and slide it onto the bottom part of the spiral. And you'll continue doing that from the bottom working your way up to the top. Now, some of the holes may be too small to slide the spiral through, so you might need to poke a pencil or a pin in through there to make them a bit larger. Once all of the slats are onto the spiral, you can secure the end and then start spreading them out to create your spiral seashell. Next, you'll attach your swivel or string to the top of your spiral. If you have a lot of excess spiral at the bottom, you can always add a marble to it for decoration. I hope you guys enjoyed this art tutorial and thanks for watching.